بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وافطر الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين. Okay, welcome everyone to Timeless Mercy, Tafsir Surah Yunus. So Alhamdulillah, today we are up to verse 96. So we'll get right into it since we're a bit delayed today. Let's get right into verse 96. بعد أن أضبط لهم نشاط ونجيم. إن indeed الذين those حقت proved true عليهم upon them. Kalimatu, the word. Rabbika, your Lord, la will not yu'minun, will not believe. Verse 96. Surely those against whom the word of your Lord has been fulfilled will not believe. Okay, so um, here today, this is actually going to be the theme of um, today's session is uh, the relationship between Allah's will and people not believing and at what point people are no longer able to um, believe or, or will not believe rather, okay? So that is going to be the theme of today's um, lesson, inshallah. So here in verse 96, we see, as the tafsir mentions, that Allah's decree that had become applicable to them was this. What is that decree? Allah does not thrust the faith, the faith on those who do not seek after the truth, who obstinately and obdurately shut their hearts against it with prejudice, who are so lost in the love of this world that they do not care at all about the hereafter, okay? So this kind of state where um, the word of Allah has been fulfilled and people are, and these individuals are no longer going to believe, this is the state, this is the result, uh, the circumstance that every one of us wants to avoid at all costs because this is to deserve the stamp of divine wrath after which Iman is no longer possible. But again, remember, it is not because Allah decrees unjustly and the servant has no power. We have to emphasize this over and over again. It's such a common misunderstanding, common question, which I feel people many times are asking just to get out of the responsibility of um, you know, believing or practicing their faith. Uh, just put it on Allah. Well, if Allah willed, you know, I would have prayed. Oh, if Allah willed, I would have been more practicing Muslim. If Allah willed, you know, I wouldn't have done this or that. Or um, So again, this is a result of one's choices. If you want guidance, Allah grants it to you and he grants it to you with increase. As we see in Surah Muhammad, verse 17, As for those who adopted the right path, he increases them in guidance and blesses them with righteousness. But if you don't want guidance, if you're not interested, then Allah doesn't want to force you either. He's not going to want it for you in a forcible manner if you don't want it in the first place. So we've said this many times before in class that guidance is one of the most precious uh, commodities or uh, blessings rather of this world. But it is one of those blessings, unlike other blessings, which you know the Muslims and, and non-Muslims the animals, the human beings, everyone indiscriminately receives regardless of their life choices, uh, all the blessings of Allah, the risk he provides to everyone, his uh, uh, believing and non-believing servants. But the blessing of guidance is different. Guidance is you can only get it if you want it. If you don't want it, um, then, it, then you know, uh, it's not going to be forced down your throat, right? Or forced into your heart. So I want to take a moment just to reflect and stop and think about the impact of choice in our lives the impact of choice in our lives the gift of free will when not guided by godliness can turn into a vehicle of one's own destruction this is why god did not just grant us free will and then leave us to our own whims and devices he, rather he sent messengers and he sent books so that invitation to the most beautiful path of uh, in life, the most beautiful path that can be taken in life, which is a life lived in the remembrance of Allah and according to his dictates, that would be made clear. And that invitation would be open uh, for our free will to be employed in if we wanted to use it to follow that path. And you know, um, just to talk about choice in a general sense, that is very relevant to all of us. You know how sometimes we all fall into not so healthy habits, not so 
uh, productive routines, which are so hard to snap out of. But realize, all of us should always remember and realize that we do have the free will to change the course, whether it's un eating unhealthy, or whether it's not praying on time, or whether it's not practicing kindness with others on a daily basis. We have the full power to change the way we think, remember we have free will, and exert a whole different life force over ourselves through our free will. The choices we make, they literally make or break our health. They literally make or break our bank account, our dunya, as well as our akhirah. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly defines, um, or, or rather identifies. He clearly identifies our actions as the causes of what happens to us in this world as well as in the next, right? As for this world, we see in Surah al rum verse 41, ظهر الفساد في البدن والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس. Corruption has spread on the land and sea as a result of what people's hands have done. Right. And then Surah An Najm, verse thirty-one. ولله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ليجزي الذين أساءوا بما عملوا ويجزي الذين أحسنوا بالحسنى. So the first uh, from Al Rum. Corruption has spread on land and sea as a result or because of what people's hands have done. That was the result of people's actions in this world, on the land and the sea. And then Surah an in verse 31 tells us about the impact of actions, or our, which are our own choices, on the next world. The verse means, an 31, to Allah alone belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth, so that he may reward the evildoers according to what they did and reward the good doers with the finest reward. So realizing this self-power that we all have can actually be life-changing and can be akhirah changing. So no matter how hard it is, the first step is realizing that we are not a slave to our habits and our cravings and our current lifestyles if they're not so positive and helpful towards our goals. Rather, we should use our free will, our power to act, to take charge. As someone said, act like you are the person responsible for helping you. Act like you are the person responsible for helping you. And the impact, subhanAllah, is huge um, in this world and the next. Surah Al-Ahqaf, verse 19, And each, yani in the next world, will be ranked according to what they have done. So what you did, and how much you did, and how well you did it, right? More than how much is how well, and with what spirit, and with ihsan, or um, you know, the quality is always more important than the quantity, right? And according to that, are the darajat, are the ranks in the hereafter, that when we see them over there, we will have, you know, we're going to regret not having done more. Uh, we're going to, and that is, again, the worst feeling is the feeling of regret. So realizing the gift, a free will uh, can really impact and change, um, you know, how we function and uh, how we can, you know, uh, actually direct the course by Allah's will to a great extent of where we wind up. But be it with the idhan of permission of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Okay, let's look at verse ninety-seven. Walo and had jaathum come to them, kulu each ayah sign hatta until yaro. Uh, they saw al adab the punishment al alim the painful punishment ninety six even if they witness every single sign that might come to them until they're face to face with the a uh, painful punishment so ninety six and ninety seven really have to be looked at and read together surely those against whom the word of your lord has been fulfilled will not believe even if they witness every single sign that might come to them until they are face to face with the painful. Punishment. Yani these people against whom the word of your Lord has been fulfilled, they're not going to believe even if they saw every single sign before them. They're not going to believe until um, they actually see the punishment. And we've seen how uh, signs actually have no impact on the psyche of such individuals. We've seen this in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 111. And even if we had sent down onto them angels and the dead had spoken onto them, and we had gathered together all things before the very eyes, they would not have believed. 
unless Allah willed, but most of them behave ignorantly, right? So this was their choice that they exerted. And again, look at the far-reaching eternal impact of choice. You know, the day we can realize that my, my, the choices of today have an impact that is eternal, you know, that is the day that we can really, uh, you know, um, fix our act, get our act together, as they say, right? Eternal impact of choice. Rooted again, of course, in the free will Allah has given us. So this attitude will lead them to witness the painful punishment they actually chose for themselves when they chose to reject faith, right? Um, so what is this attitude of defiance? Um, willful defiance lead to it's going to lead to this painful punishment and they're not going to believe until that painful punishment comes and they see it right so this is abuse of that free will right because it winds up haunting its doer Sayyid Qutb Allah Ta'ala in uh, his great tafsir fi ghilal al-Quran the shir of the Quran he says God's law is such that when one does not see guidance one will not find it. And one who does not open his eyes and heart to the light will not see it. A person who wastes his perceptions will not benefit by what he perceives. Look at how wise that statement is. A person who wastes his perceptions will not benefit by what he perceives and will end up in error. Whatever proofs and signs are available will remain of no use to them, to him, right? So uh, this is the reality of the situation and um, abuse of all those faculties which are designed to affirm our fitra um, is going to lead to a very dark place. Okay, let's look at verse 98. Falaw. So if, falaw so had there not been, so this is how you would translate it, right? Did it ever happen? Falaw was there ever? Can it? was qariyatun a a town or a people amanat qariya literally means town or village amanat actually believed fanafaha so benefited it imanuha its iman so was there ever a town that believed and benefited by its iman except illa illa except qauma the people of yunus Yunus alayhi salam, lemma when amanu, when they believed, kashafna, we removed from them or on whom from them. Adab, the punishment, al khizi, humiliating. We removed from them the humiliating punishment, fi in al hayat al dunya, in the life of this world. Wa and we granted them enjoyment or let them enjoy ila until heen, uh, in a short while. Verse 98. Did it ever happen that the people of a town believed on seeing Allah's punishment and its believing benefited them? Except for the people of Yunus, alayhi salam. When they saw, except at the people of Yunus, when they believed, we granted them reprieve, yani respite, or saved them from a humiliating punishment in this world and we let them enjoy themselves for a while. Okay, so there, Yunus alayhi salam people are the only uh, people who benefited from uh, their iman after they had seen the punishment. So 98, verse 98, really it's a bleak history of humanity summed up right here. Um, you know, this is how they all reacted to the message of mercy and salvation. So Ibn Kathir poses uh, this question uh, that Allah asks, did any town from the previous nations believe in its entirety when they received the messengers, when they received the message of all the messengers that we sent before you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Rather, they were all denied, right? All the messengers that were sent before you, O Muhammad, were all denied by their people or the majority of their people, right? And we have this uh, evidence from the Quran, uh, so many different surahs, instances like chapter 36 verse 30 alas for mankind there never came a messenger to them but they used to mock at him right um 
كذلك ما أتى الذين من قبلهم برسول إلا قالوا ساحر أو مجنون chapter 51 verse 52 likewise no messenger came to those before them but they said a sorcerer or a madman so unfortunately we see that this has been the uh, overwhelming reaction of the vast majority of uh, humankind even though a messenger was sent to each and every one of them instead of welcoming the messenger the revelation like a long awaited rain after a drought they remained oblivious to their spiritual poverty and shunned the guidance when it came to them what and for what preferring their comfort zones right preferring the comfort that their comfort zones offered them whether that was wealth or status or the ways of their forefathers or their culture whatever comfort those comfort zones offered them because of which they preferred um, the their way over the truth allowed that to blind their eyes to the haq that was before them so again remember there's nothing wrong with the light that the light is not deficient the light is not absent there's nothing wrong with the light if a person chooses to close her eyes and remain in darkness right so the only exception to this bleak blanket reality uh, were the people of Yunus السلام, who were saved from the humiliating punishment that was on their way even after they saw it generally the people saw the punishment it was already too late because that's like iman and mushahid that we talked about yesterday right iman and mushahid um, the iman that you have after you see your own death that you know you cannot now escape from or after one sees the punishment so Yunus Alayhisselam's people saw uh, the signs of the punishment coming towards them um, but uh, they believed repented and actually were able to benefit from that iman yani the punishment was averted from them so why they were the exception we will look at in a few moments but first we just want to talk about who the people of Yunus Alayhisselam were and actually they're identified as the Assyrian nation, the Assyrians, and they were uh, very populous, right? In Surah Al-Safat, verse 147, We have the verses in Surah Al-Safat, 147, 148, and we sent him, referring to Yunus, alayhi salam, to 100,000 people or even more, which of course in that time was a huge population. And they believed, so we gave them enjoyment for a while. So there's some very, very interesting facts about the Assyrians that uh, Yunus a.s. is sent to, um, that he mentions that Yunus a.s., uh, he was about over 800 years, about 800 years before uh, Isa a.s., okay? So his time frame is 860 to 784 BC, okay? So he's about 800 years before Christ, alayhi salam. And he was a prophet from Bani Israel. He was sent to Iraq for the guidance of the Assyrians. Not Syrians of current day Syria, no. These are the Assyrians, A-S-S-Y-R-I-A-N, the Assyrians. And they have been called the people of Yunus, alayhi salam, because of the fact that he was sent to them. And if you think where this is, well, at that time, Nineveh, a very ancient and famous city was their capital, and this is where uh, Yunus a.s. was sent to Nineveh. N-I-N-E-V-E-H, Nineveh. And it was a so it was an ancient and famous city. It was their capital of the Assyrian people. Its vast remains are scattered on the left bank of the Tigris, opposite to the city of Mosul. Okay, so this is in present day Iraq. Okay. Uh, this area of Nineveh or this town, the city of Nineveh that Yunus Reisam was sent to is in Iraq, opposite to the city of Mosul, which is there. Um, it's remains scattered on the uh, banks of the, uh, the left bank of the Tigris, right? So in order to form an estimate of the glory of these people, suffice it to say that the mere circumference of the capital Nineveh itself was 60 miles or so so this is a huge uh center of uh, uh you know population culture civilization we can assume uh, was there at that time and this is where Yunus al -Islam was sent to so you know sometimes we read the quran and the where the prophets were is kind of a blur in our mind so 
Actually, you can put your finger on it on the map, right? Um, this is where he was sent, alayhi salam. So those, these are the people who believed uh, on account of uh, that belief, that iman, the humiliating punishment was removed from them and they were allowed to enjoy their blessings in this world for some time. Now the question arises, how is it that the punishment was removed from them after they had seen it, right? After its signs had appeared before them. And we know the sunnah of Allah, as this verse is also telling us, is that iman does not benefit after they see the adab. So this is why the question is posed in the verse, you know, has there been any town that benefited um, after it had seen, right? Uh, you know, the coming punishment, uh, was there a people whose iman benefited them after they saw the punishment, except for the people of Yunus? So the answer is, the reason they are the exception uh, to this rule is, like the fame mentions, Yunus Islam left the place of his mission without divine permission after warning the people of the torment of the adab that would come to them. Therefore, Allah forgave the Assyrians when they repented after seeing some signs of the coming punishment. This was in accordance with the prince, divine principles as stated in the Quran. For according to one of these, Allah does not inflict any torment on any people till he ha his uh, his message has been fully, uh, until he has fully demonstrated the message to them, as the uh, prophet. Yunus salam, did not continue his admonition in accordance with the appointed term and left the place of his mission before time of his own accord. Allah's justice did not inflict the punishment because the legal argument against his people had not been fulfilled. SubhanAllah. Although no one knows what the exact term of uh, the appointment is, no one except Allah knows how long Yunus alayhi was exactly supposed to stay there to complete the hujjah, to complete um, the appointed time after which the punishment will become mandatory on these people. But subhanAllah, look at the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he left without permission, became very angry and frustrated because the people were not listening to him, right? They were idol worshippers and he had admonished them uh, over and over again and they were simply not budging. So he left in a state of anger, but he did that before divine permission to do so had been granted. So subhanAllah, um, that was reason enough for Allah to then suspend the punishment, even though its signs had appeared. And when they saw the signs, it is said in some of the accounts that um, the sky changed color um, and they realized that you know the punishment was on its way. Um, so at that point, they begin looking frantically for their prophet, uh, Yunus alayhi salam, and he was nowhere to be found. And then they all gathered together and even brought their livestock and their families and began to sincerely repent uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ward off their punishment. So actually, the uh, detailed account, Ibn Kathir has, a, has, has the uh, account um, you know, in, a, in very nice detail. Um, and he starts it off with the narration um, that... Uh, where the Prophet Sallallahu is attributed to have said, the prophets were displayed before me. There was a prophet who passed with a group of people and a prophet who passed with only one man, a prophet with two men and a prophet with no one. So what are we talking about? What does this uh, hadith have uh, to do with anything? Well, um, it's a hadith speaking about how few followers prophets had among from the people they were sent to, to the point that there was there would be a prophet who, who had only a small group of people, and then another prophet who only one person, another with only two people that believed in him, and then there would even be prophets, subhanAllah, who had not a single follower. Oh my goodness, subhanAllah. I mean, that is just mind-boggling, but this is the reality, right? And so the Rasul Sallallahu is mentioning um, this, uh, because it goes on to say that he mentioned the multitude of followers that Musa had that then when he saw them, yani, um, he saw the followers of Musa Islam, then that he saw his nation of people filling from the west to the east. The point is that Musa and Yunus salam, there was no nation in, in its entirety that believed except the people of Yunus, the people of Nineveh, right? Um, so after Musa had a multitude of followers, after that, 
there were very few uh, people that believed other than that, except the Qawm of Yunus Alayhisam who entered into the deen um, of Yunus Alayhisam Islam in throngs, in huge multitudes. So this was actually rare for this to happen. Um, no nation believes in its entirety. And then he continues, and they only believed because they feared that the torment from which their messenger warned them might strike them. They actually witnessed its signs. So they cried to Allah and asked for help. They engaged in humility in invoking him. They brought their children and cattle and asked Allah to lift the torment from which their prophet had warned them. As a result, Allah sent his mercy and removed the scourge from them and gave them respite. So this is um, what the verse is referring to, except the people of Yunus, right? That there was no town whose iman benefited them after they saw the punishment, and he saw its signs, it was coming, it was impending now, except the people of Yunus, when they believed, removed from them the torment of disgrace in the life of the world, and permitted them to endure for a while, for some time, right? So Qatada, uh, in interpreting this, as Ibn Kathir mentions, explains, no town has denied the truth and then believed when they saw the punishment, and then their belief benefited them, except the people of Yunus when they lost their prophet and they thought that the scourge was close upon them, Allah sent through their hearts the desire to repent. So they wore woolen fabrics and separated each animal from its offspring. Then they cried out to Allah for 40 nights. When Allah saw the truth in their hearts and that they were sincere in their repentance and regrets, he removed the punishment from them, right? So perhaps Allah, um, uh, of, of course, Allah knows everything. So perhaps these people were, that if they were to be given a second chance, would not go back on their ways, right? And this is actually what they uh, did, right? They did not go back on their ways. Um, and this is why they were allowed to then, uh, you know, enjoy life a little bit longer. And Qadad also mentioned that it was said that the people of Yunus were in Nainawa, the land of, uh, or Nainawa, the land of Mosul. And this was also reported from Ibn Masood and others, right? So, they were enjoyed, uh, allowed to enjoy their blessings for a while. Well, what happened after a while, right? Um, well, the Assyrians believed in the message, so they were given a new lease of life, as Maududi puts it, right? But after some time, they adapted the wrong ways of thought and deed. So again, we see humanity going down that dark path of destruction. Prophet Nahum warned and admonished them, but without any effect, then Prophet Zephania gave them the last warning that he will destroy Assyria and will make Nineveh a desolate place. But it also proved in vain, and yani the people did not heed. At last, in about 612 BC, Allah made the Medes, uh, Medes dominant over them. The Median king, with the help of the Babylonians, invaded Assyria and their army was defeated and was besieged within the walls of Nineveh. They put up a stiff resistance for some time, but then the floods in the Tigris swept away the city wall, and the invaders swarmed into the city and burnt it to ashes along with the surrounding countryside. The Assyrian king set fire to his own palace and was himself burnt to death. Thus the Assyrian empire and its culture came to an end forever. The recent archaeological excavations reveal widespread effects of the fire. So the people who believed in Yunus at that time had the punishment word off from them and they were that generation that were allowed to enjoy their life a little bit longer yani until they died naturally. But then after them, uh, the generation that came after them, unfortunately, um, you know, they adopted the wrong uh, ways uh, once again and then uh, you have other prophets coming to them and still when they do not heed the warning then the punishment overtakes them so this is a brief uh, summary or history of uh, the people of Yunus alayhi salam uh, the best generation among them who repented and believed and then those who came afterwards okay 99 brings us back to our theme of the day uh, verse number 99, and had willed, your Lord, and had your Lord willed, 
surely would have believed man whomsoever fi in al ard the earth kulluhum each of them jami'an all of them so there's an emphasis in two different ways a so shall you fa is the so part so shall anta so shall you tukrehu force annas the people hatta until yakunu they become mu'minin believers verse number 99 had your lord so willed all those who are on earth would have believed will you then force people into believing so subhanallah here again we see the sunnah and will of allah with regards to iman and free will if he wanted he could make every single person on earth believe so that no one is left upon kufr and denial right he could have forced them or just made them uh, believe like the angels are not forced but they don't have free will they don't have the option of not believing so he he, he can do that uh, as uh, he wills and he has shown that he has done that in the case of the angels right but then as far as human beings are concerned if this was done to them then how would jannah make sense for those who have no choice but to be believers right Maududi mentions how this would have defeated the wisdom that underlies the creation of mankind. It is in Allah's full power to make the world Muslim, right? It is in His full power to make the world Muslim. I was at a uh, um, iftar the other day where we had people who had embraced Islam. And one of the questions uh, in the icebreaker was um, if you... Uh, could make one famous person celebrity politician muslim you know who would it be um allah subhanahu has the full power to make each celebrity each politician each powerful person um it is in his full power to, the, to make the whole world muslim but he does not want that kind of iman he does not want to force people until they believe and this uh verse 99 is uh, seemingly addressed to the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yani, would you, O Prophet, force people into uh, submitting? You know, is it possible for the Prophet Sallallahu to force people to believe? Was he forcing people to believe? Um, and, you know, this is one of the misconceptions about our religion is that, you know, conversion by the sword or, you know, having this element of force. Although the ayah is so clear, la ikraha fid deen, there is no compulsion in religion. So, uh, what is the meaning of this uh, question that, shall you um, then force people into believing? What is the meaning of this question in this ayah? Well, the, he mentions that this does not at all mean that the Prophet Sallallahu desired to force people to become believers and that Allah was forbidding him to do this. In fact, the Quran here has adopted the same method of admonishing the people that it has adopted in many other places. And we mentioned this yesterday, though the words have apparently been addressed to the person of the Prophet, in fact, these have been addressed to the people. So if we weren't paying attention earlier, if you look at verse 99, uh, so shall you um, is in the singular. So the addressee is the Prophet, apparently, right? Uh, the linguistic apparent addressee literally uh, appears to be the Prophet. But we have to understand that this is a style that the Quran uses where the words are apparently addressed to the Prophet وسلم, but in fact are meant for the people, right? Because the Prophets are the most obedient to Allah's commands, all of them, the difficult of them and the easy of them. And when Allah has said that there is no compulsion in religion, then it is not fathomable that a Prophet would then force people in matters of religion, right? So. The addresses are, in fact, the people. The implication is, oh, people, our messenger has made the distinction between guidance and deviation quite clear and plain by argument and pleading. Now, therefore, it is for you to believe or not to believe in the guidance. If you accept that someone should force you to adopt the right way, you should know that this duty has not been assigned to our prophet. Had Allah willed this, he could have done it himself. There would have been no need of sending any prophet to you, right? So um, 
you uh, believers are certainly not charged with this duty of forcing people to believe. The Prophet ﷺ himself did not have that job and Allah himself does not do this, right? So this is something that is farthest from the spirit uh, of Islam, both the letter uh, of the Quran as well as the spirit of the Quran, both are opposed to this misunderstanding. So it's really time to clear it up in our minds. And this is part of Allah's perfection, right? Allah, in His perfection, uh, part of His perfection is that there's no contradiction in His actions, right? Once He created the human being with free will, then He will not force that up with forcing them to believe because free will and forcing are opposites, right? So um, that is not, uh, that cannot happen. That cannot issue forth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any contradiction cannot issue forth uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is perfect right, in his actions. So his will is that it be done voluntarily. This is this is obvious, right? That he wills that iman be taken up voluntarily um, through the gift of free will to the human being if he or she chooses to do so. And that type of uh, voluntary iman is deserving of reward in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the iman of value. When you use all of your gifts that he has given you, your free will, your senses, your fitra, the signs of the universe to recognize your creator. When you use all of these gifts and blessings properly, then you have done well. Then you have lived well. And by Allah's grace, he will then make you worthy of living splendidly forever and ever, inshallah. Okay, verse 100 Wa and ma, it was not, kana and it was not, li nafsin, for a nafs, for a soul, and that to mina, believe, to believe, illa, except be with idhnillah, except with the idhn, the permission of Allah. Wa and yaj'alu, makes or places, or lays a rijza, a rijza rather, um, abomination, Allah upon Alladina those la who do not yaqilun who do not um, use their intellect. Verse one hundred. No one can believe except by Allah's leave, and Allah lays abomination on those who do not use their understanding. Arijisa impurity or filth. Here translated as abomination. So uh, yes, we have free will, but at the same time, no one can believe without Allah willing that. Right. No one can believe except by Allah's leave, as the verse says. Because ultimately, even the free will of the human being is under the great grand will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like everything in the universe is under the great grand will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not a leaf can fall without his will. So how can the blessing of Iman enter anyone's um, heart without his will? Just like uh, shaitan was given respite by his will. Remember, it is his kingdom. Therefore, nothing can occur in it except by his permission. Both the good and the bad occurs by his permission, by his wisdom, because he allows them to. He's not pleased with the evil, obviously, but he allows it because without his allowance, uh, nothing can uh, exist. Nothing can happen. And um, why he allows it, you know, um, as his wisdom dictates. Uh, Wallahu alam, right? So part of the divine will is that those who choose to not use their senses will then become stained with this rijs, with this filth, with this darkness of disbelief, right? If you choose to not use what you're supposed to use, then what is going to happen, right? And we are so ready to accept um, this in matters of dunya. Like if we choose to not take the medicine, even though we are so sick, then what do we ex ex uh, expect except illness, right? Um, or worsening of our condition. So we're very um, logical in matters of dunya. We logically apply, you know, the same way of thinking. Um, well, it is the same thing in terms of iman, right? If you choose to not use your senses, just like you choose not to take the medicine, then just like your health will become stained and uh, sickly, so will your heart become stained with filth, right? So that's the rids uh, that is referred to in this Ayah, right? 
um, no one can believe except by Allah's leave, and Allah lays a rijs, this stain, on those who do not use their understanding, right? So this is the natural result, just like the medicine example. And Maududi clarifies that this points out clearly that the above principle is not applied blindly and irrationally, so as to bestow the blessing of faith on or withhold it from anyone without any rhyme or reason, but it works according to a system which is based on wisdom. Allah bestows this on anyone who uses his common sense properly in search of the truth, for Allah provides for such a one the means of attaining it in proportion to the sincerity of his intention and the extent of his exertion and grants him its correct knowledge required for faith. So just like in Akhra Darajatun, Walikulin Darajatun in Ma'amilu, just like in the next world, there are Darajat ascending ranks in paradise, each higher than the one below it, according to what people, um, you know, earned or, uh, or according to their actions. Similarly, in this dunya, Iman enters our heart to the extent, to the proportion of sincerity and exertion and um, effort that one makes to attain it, right? Um, a person who has faith um, and has never read a book in their life, has, uh, you know, never delved into the meanings of the Quran, but they still say, La ilaha illallah has faith, but their faith is not like the scholar who toils for 30, 40, 50 years uh, into the details and the depths of um, the sciences and um, the, the Quranic message, right? So in proportion to um, the sincerity and the exertion, the effort, uh, in proportion to that would be the experience of Iman even in this world. According to that will be the joy of Iman, the taste of Iman, the sweetness of Iman, right? And it only is fair. Um, so arids, then filth, then this impurity will obviously will be then the lot of those who uh, are not engaging whatsoever in uh, seeking the light and seeking the purity, right? So then what is left for them but that he throws the filth of ignorance and deviation and wrong thinking on uh, the one who is not a seeker of truth, does not use uh, his common sense, is not interested to search for the truth. Uh, remember the person who does not think uh, they need to be cured, right? Then the, how will the Quran be shifa for them if you don't feel you have the need for the medicine in the first place? Because Iman is that light which purifies and Kufr is that darkness that stains the person from the inside to the point that the rusted heart cannot see anything. And the great blessing of Iman is bestowed by Allah's will, by Allah's leave, right? And that he mentioned this is to emphasize the principle that the bestowal of all these blessings is in the power of Allah alone. Therefore, none can acquire or bestow on anyone any blessing without the permission of Allah. Do not pay any heed to his commands and prohibitions. Who don't pay mind to his exhortations. All of us may know people um, that you know aren't really interested in what Deen has to say about their life. Are not interested. Are not interested in having Deen inform them on their daily lives, their lifestyles, their habits, whether they pray or not, how they're raising their children, how they're interacting with others, what they're wearing. You know, some people just pay no mind, Muslims, I'm talking about Muslims, right, who pay no mind uh, to the halal and the haram, who have paid no mind to, um, you know, his exhortations, are not interested, simply, right? they're good. Uh, they find themselves ghani, they find themselves independent of um, Allah's guidance because they think they're good. So um, then Allah will not force them. If you don't want it, then you don't have to have it. Okay, verse 101. قُلْ سَيْ قُلْ انظروا, Say, look, ماذا? What fi in as-samawat, the heavens, wal-ard, and the earth. Wa and ma 
shall not tughni avail al ayat the signs one nudur and the warnings an from or here it means for or to qaum a people la who do not yu'minun who do not believe 101 tell them observe carefully all that is in the heavens and the earth but no signs and warnings can avail those who are bent on not believing so again the call to look at those things that are there the signs in the universe that are there to bring you to iman to remind you um, to resonate the call of the fitra within you but remember if you don't want to go somewhere simply owning a gps will not help you you have to want the destination to get on the road voluntarily right but if there's no interest in believing then there shall be no arriving either to the destination of iman and as for those who ask for signs and then they will believe and this was common among uh, people of Makkah. oh if you show us this sign oh if you do this if you do that they would um, you know mention you know fantastic signs that if you bring these then we will believe so Tafi mentions that uh, this is the answer to the condition that they would believe him to be a true prophet if a sign would be shown to them so the prophet وسلم, has been told to say to those who are asking for a, a sign to be a precondition to them believing say to them there are countless signs in the heavens and the earth which confirm and testify to the message that i'm giving you you could have easily recognized them had you observed and considered them with open eyes and open hearts but if you lack this urge and desire for the truth that is the problem not wanting it not desiring it if you lack this urge and desire for the truth you will not accept and acknowledge it however wonderful and miraculous and supernatural the sign may be for you can just say you know it's magic like Pharaoh and his chief say right if you bring the most amazing mind boggling of signs you, if, but if you're not interested in truth, you, it's magic, right? You can dismiss it as magic, very convenient. So the fact is that the people who suffer from this malady, who suffer from this type of thinking, see the truth only when the torment with all its horrors overtakes them, just as Pharaoh believed when he did believe, but when he was drowning. And at that time, repentance and iman have no place. Things that are so weighty with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, iman, which is the heaviest thing right of the heaviest things in terms of how it saves one from the fire of hell and repentance toba which is so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even that will not benefit will not avail will not weigh anything will not have any value if it comes too late okay the last verse for today verse 102 Fahal, so are they yantadiruna waiting ex illa except mithla for the like ayam, for the like of the days alladina that khalo have passed min from before them. Qul, say fantadiru, so wait inni, indeed I, ma'akum, along with you, min from al muntadirin, among those who wait. 102. What are they waiting for except to witness the repetition of the days of calamity that their predecessors witnessed? Tell them, wait, I too am waiting with you. Okay, so here, um, are they waiting for the kind of days that descended on those before them? And if you look at the word in Arabic for days, it's ayam in the verse, which is plural of yom, which means day, so ayam means days. So the question is, are they just waiting for the days that uh, passed before? Um, and so days in Arabic in this usage doesn't just mean days, it means days of punishment. It means uh, ayam refers to the days of adab, uh, the previous nation. So they're days marked by adab or punishment, divine punishment in history. Though, though that's what is referred to by using days here. Okay, so what person of intellect waits passively for their doom without actively subverting that, uh, the uh, asbab, the reasons that are about to lead to their destruction? Like, who does that? Like, if a trustworthy warner comes and informs, you know, them about an impending army of might that is on its way to attack them, you know, wouldn't they hurry and scurry to save themselves? 
Then what about the adab that the prophets warn against? That is more ferocious than the fiercest of armies, that lasts forever, that is the fire prepared for the faithless. Are they just going to, you know, sit around waiting? But they are told, you know, then just wait because they're not inclined to accepting the truth. They were not inclined to acting and to becoming believers. So if we look at, to end, if we look at these two verses together, 101, 102, Ibn Kathir mentions in looking at these together, the command to reflect upon the creation of the heavens and the earth, Allah, the exalted, guides his servants to reflect upon his blessings. What Allah has created in the heavens and the earth is part of the clear signs for those who possess correct understanding. For that which is in the heavens are the luminous stars, the firmaments, the moving planetary bodies, the sun and the moon. This includes the, the night and day. They're alternating and they're merging so that one is long and the other is short. Then they alternate through the year so that the long one becomes short and the short one becomes long. Likewise, from the signs in the heavens is the rising of the sun, its vastness, its beauty and its adornment. Also, whatever rain that Allah sends down from the heavens, thereby bringing the earth to life after its death and causing various types of fruits, crops, flowers and plants to grow is from its signs. Whatever Allah creates in the earth from the various species of beasts with their different colors and benefits for the human being are signs. The mountains, the plains, the deserts, the civilizations, the structures, the barren lands of the earth are signs. Then there are wonders of the sea and its waves. Yet it has still all been made subservient and submissive to those who travel upon its surface. It carries their ships, allowing them to traverse upon it with ease. Thus is all under the control of the most able. There is no God worthy of worship except him, and there is no true Lord other than him. So the whole universe, all of existence is one huge sign but the problem is it's not going to benefit people that are not interested in believing right so um the last thing that is said to them is Fantabiru. so then wait so just wait and see i'm also waiting along with you uh, and see what's going to happen in the end to those who reject faith um okay so alhamdulillah with that we conclude uh, tomorrow, subhanAllah, is the last day of Timeless Mercy of Seed Surah Yunus. And alhamdulillah, we have unlaunched our surprise. I hope you are all delighted. Um, it's actually the first time that we are offering something in the last uh, 10 days. Um, Insha'Allah, I'm really looking forward to that. It will only actually be four days because we're going to just keep the class schedule Monday through Thursday, same time, same, um, Insha'Allah, uh, structure. So really, really looking forward to having you all uh, participate and we'll be releasing more details and how we would like to um, see you participate and how you can actually uh, have the chance to meet each other this is one thing a purpose um, one of the purposes that I actually wanted to have uh, a segment like that was in order to uh, meet all of you alhamdulillah we have been together for a few years now but I have not had the chance to get to know uh, each and every one of you so uh, I was thinking of requesting if we can have cameras on next week, inshallah, um, if whoever is comfortable with that, as we can actually get to see and talk and reflect in a way that I hope will make uh, the last segment of Ramadan um, as beneficial as we can make it, inshallah. Um, so with that, we conclude for today. Inshallah, see you tomorrow. Subhanaka wa bihamdika la ila illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank mm -hmm. you.